All right, sixth grade. So our screencast today is on writing and evaluating expressions that are using addition and subtraction. <clears throat> our objective is I can use variables to write expressions that involve addition and subtraction from real world problems. And then the second step is to evaluate the expressions when you're given the value of the variable. So when they tell you what the letters represent, you can solve them. We'll start with an opening, a little review. How can we show a number increased by two? So we know we can write a plus two or two plus a, since addition is commutative, we can write it either way. We can also use tape diagrams or models. So I can take an entire model and I can show a and two, or I can also show two and a. Finally, another strategy that we've recently been talking about is to apply a word problem to it to make sense of it. So I can pretend like Jade has some apples. I don't know how many, so maybe that is A. Jade has some apples, but Evelet has two more apples than Jade. How many apples does Evelet have? So I can come up with a simple word problem that would help me think about this up here. All right, it is important to be specific when we name variables. So I'm gonna have you write down this table. We're gonna have the variable, the incorrect way to name or describe the variable, and then the correct way to name or describe the variable. So we have these variables. You can see how I skipped lines. That's all the space that you'll need. So we're gonna pretend like we have a word problem that is about Josh's speed, a word problem that is about Rufus's height, milk sold, Colleen's time in the 40 meter hurdles, Sean's age, Carolyn's CDs, and then milk money. So we're gonna pretend like we have word problems about those things, but we don't really. And we're gonna talk about the correct and incorrect way to write. Um, or describe those variables. So let's pretend like we have a problem where we have to find Josh's speed, but they don't tell us exactly uh, what his speed is. So we just have to pick a letter to represent that. So they're saying the incorrect way would just to be saying, oh, I'm gonna pick J and J represents the speed. They're saying that is not specific enough. The correct way to describe that variable would be by saying, J is going to be Josh's speed in meters per second. Do you see how that's a lot more specific than just saying speed? I'm telling you how I'm gonna be measuring the speed. Okay, so for the next one, we have Rufus's height. So it's not enough to just say, I'm gonna use the letter R and R is going to represent Rufus's height. We have to tell how we're measuring his height. So the correct way to say this would be R is Rufus's height in centimeters. Okay, for the next one, we have milk sold. So it's not enough to just say M is my variable and it is the amount of milk sold. Well, is it in pints? Is it in gallons? we should say M is the amount of milk sold in gallons. That's more specific than just the amount of milk sold. So hopefully you're starting to see the pattern. We have to be extra specific. Colleen's time in the 40 meter hurdles, it's not enough to just say C represents Colleen's time. How are you measuring her time? C should be Colleen's time in seconds. Okay, for Sean's age, we can't just say S represents Sean's age. Well, we wanna know how are you measuring his age in years would be more specific. Now there are gonna be some problems where it's not about a speed or um, something that you can measure. It might just be talking about objects like Carolyn's CDs. So K is the number of CDs, might seem like it's enough, but actually we can still be more specific. Even though we're not gonna measure that, we can say K is the number of CDs that Carolyn owns. It's not just any number of CDs, it's the number that she specifically has in her possession. 
And then finally, the very last one, milk money. Um, it's not enough to just say M represents the amount of milk money. Instead, we could say the amount of milk money in dollars. So the whole point of this little exercise here was to show you that when we're talking about variables, it's super important to use specific language. So hopefully that was really good practice and you're gonna be able to be very accurate in pinpointing specific information when you're talking about these problems. That'll help us make more sense of these algebraic problems in general. So it's just good practice. All right, so we're gonna flip our page over and we're gonna look at um, some word problems and creating some expressions that have variables from these word problems. So across the top of your paper, you need to set up a chart. We're gonna turn our whole page into a chart. So we're gonna have the story problem, the description with units, the expression, evaluate the expression if dot, 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 and then show work and evaluate. So once you have that set up, you can go ahead and write the first story problem and I'm going to keep part of this covered up so we only see a little bit at a time. So Greg, and you have to write small, but Greg has two more dollars than his brother Jeff. Write an expression for how much Greg has or for how much money Greg has. 